welcome to this candid conversation on gender and climate justice. And I have the pleasure of welcoming Fleur Newman. She is Gender Affairs Officer, UN Climate Change Secretariat, and Farwiza Farhan, leader of Forest, Nature and Environment, an Indonesia-based NGO working to protect the local ecosystem in Sumatra. Good to have you with us, ladies. Thank you. Good to Thank be here. Thank you for having us. Fleur, the impacts of climate change are felt differently by men and women, with women being more vulnerable and facing higher risks and burdens. Can you explain why? Sure. I think I'd like to start, though, with just a slight clarification there. There's a little bit of nuance to this in that women and men do experience climate change differently, but it's not always women who are more vulnerable. Women are often more vulnerable because of existing gender inequalities, because of existing structural uh, barriers to access to finance or access to information. So there are, uh, it, climate change exacerbates existing inequalities. So the inequalities that already exist are made more intense by uh, the impacts of climate change. Uh, Wiesa, we'd like to hear more about the work of your NGO in empowering the local community in Sumatra in decision making. What we do is pretty much giving them tools for them to be to have meaningful participation in decision making. For example, communities naturally have a seat at the table legally um, on deciding whether the certain development could happen in an area, whether certain infrastructure could take place. But then at the same time, often these rights come with limitations. They will be given uh, uh, local community who are often farmers or uh, fishermen are given a document this thick that maybe someone who is super educated are unable to read or understand, let alone being able to argue about it in the committee, in the meeting rooms. And, and that really limits their ability to live up to their rights to have access um, to decision making. So the work that we do is giving them training on how to quickly understand this type of, uh, of decision that needs to be taken, giving them paralegal training so they have basic understanding on what to do when there's destruction that happened in the area. Because at the end of the day, local community not only stand in the front line of the conservation movement, they are also often the one being blamed when forest destruction takes place. All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. You mentioned information, uh, access to information, and that's very important. How can the media help? I think this is, this is a really underestimated, uh, the power of the media and the power of communication is underestimated in, in how it can make change. One of the things I think is about this issue of how information is presented and the importance of being able to present it both in local languages, but also in, um, in formats that are accessible for people who don't necessarily read. So um, infographics and things like that, which are, are visual can be um, a, an important way of, of communicating a complex issue in, in a relatively simple way. And that's particularly important in times of disaster. Yeah. And understanding who uses technology is really critically important. So knowing if you have a disaster uh, re um, uh, alert system, if that's using a particular technology that doesn't actually get used by all of the population, then you need to think about how, uh, how you reach the, the rest of the population. One more point before I go back to Isa. Uh, Fleur, women are often left out of talks about climate change, even though they sometimes are in the best position to provide solutions because of their dual roles as caretakers and providers. Again, I think this is, this is a, um, it's not unique to, to climate change discussions. Um, there are challenges in, in ensuring that women are at the table in, in all sorts of uh, situations. It is actually something under the international process, which has been identified as something that needs to be worked on. And there are uh, uh, activities being undertaken to make sure that there are more women participating not only in country delegations, but also in decision-making positions within that international process. All right, 
Uh, Wiesa, in your experience, can you tell us about the role women often play in community activism? And what tools do they need to play an even bigger role? This is uh, an interesting experiment that we did a few years back. So we run a number of Palari Girl training for the local community. The reason why we do that, we do this is because when you're on the ground, a whole lot of people have this perception that when you run into troubles, when there is big development that come in and take over your land or destroy your source of water, they would immediately go to the head of district or to the local parliamentarian who they personally know. So the case of uh, flow of power are not structural. So instead of making a police report of the illegal activities, they skip that process. And by skipping that process, they prevent uh, legal law enforcement from taking place. So when we do uh, paralegal training, we run an experiment both on the general group, both men and women, and also we do paralegal training just for women. Mm. Interestingly, later down the line, we find that the male paralegal is pretty much inactive unless there is consistent holding hand of, of uh, you know, taking them with us, going to the police station, this is what you need to do, and then taking the report forward. But the women, they're much more active. Now they have the knowledge and the tools. Um, they start, once they notice that there's illegal forestry activity taking place in the area, they immediately contact us and say, hey, look, we find this. Can we make this police report? Is there anything more that we need, any more information that we need to collect? they are much more aware of their environment and they are much more in tune to what they need to do next. And the reason for this, I think partly because the women are hugely impacted yes. by environmental destruction. The, the case that I mentioned yesterday, that was a case of illegal gold mining um, that polluted the river because they used mercury to purify the gold. The woman ended up consuming fish and shellfish from that river. And we know how mercury poisoning impact our bodies and our families. And women want to protect their families. Essentially, that's Essentially. where it comes from. Uh, religion also plays a vital role in shaping cultural, uh, social, economic and political norms. Uh, Faith-based organizations are amongst the oldest providers of humanitarian assistance. Uh, they have not yet succeeded in challenging the patriarchal structures that have perpetuated discrimination? We, um, I, I mean, I think one of the things we've found in, certainly in the international process, uh, perhaps not specifically in relation to gender uh, and climate change, but certainly faith-based organisations have been active in looking at the issue of climate change from uh, from a from a conservation perspective and from a, uh, a protection perspective, um, it's I, I I can't comment on on what uh, where they're going in terms of uh, of gender equality, but certainly from a climate change perspective, it's something that has been picked up by a number of faith-based organisations, and it is an important um, uh, avenue through which communication can happen. Uh, Wiesa, do you want to share with us a success story? Uh, you've been working for, for so long now. How you've managed to transform the lives of these women? You know, there are several interesting um, examples. Some, some of them are on a personal level and yes. another on community level. Um, the place where I live and work is quite conservative. Uh, one of the comments that people give about me showing up at the woman Delifa is the fact that I don't wear a headscarf, so I don't belong in my community. But then at the same time, through the work that we do with other women in Aceh, enable them to push the boundary, to push the edge of comfort for others. Um, if I need a community organizer that would approach certain communities in different way, I would look for female community organizer. We are forming um, all-female ranger team because we know that when a group of women tell uh, uh, those who are involved in illegal activity that they could not 
continue doing that, they would do it differently. They would do it less forcefully. They are a lot more persuasive. And they are very effective uh, on the task that is given at hand. When the women uh, um, are asked to find out how the community is doing, how the community is feeling, they are a lot more in tune, attuned into yes. uh, what is actually happening instead of stick to the questions that we have pre-prepared. Um, and of course, empowering them has this ripple effect on their families and the community at large. Absolutely. The thing is often the elites are men, and if you just bypass the elite and go straight to the grassroots, we learn that these women are much, much more effective in changing and transforming their communities, often for the better. Ladies, to wrap up, let me just ask you, what are your future plans to advance the gender equality agenda <laughs> and the commitments that you're making here at Women Deliver 2019? Love. Well, mine's relatively uh, straightforward in the sense that um, my job is to support countries as they advance gender equality within the international process uh, under the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. And this is a year is a year of review of, of the existing uh, action plan and, and work program. And I will continue to uh, advance gender equality and women's empowerment, women's and girls' empowerment through, through that process. Excellent. Wiza? For me, it's more creating space and enabling space. And if I have to take more risks for others to be able to do what they aspire to do, then I'll do that. Um, if I have to step down to give space for others, then I'll do that. Um, I want to create more space for more women and to amplify those who are already doing great work. You're doing incredible work, both of you. Many thanks for joining us on Face to Face. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Farwiza Farhan and Fleur Newman, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.